Pretty menus and nice looking dining rooms can be deceiving because it's what's not on the menu at your favorite restaurant that can make you sick. Channel 4 News learning exclusively today of what could be the first major outbreak of food poisoning in South Florida since 1986. The investigation centers around the Embassy Suites Hotel in Fort Lauderdale. Broward Health Department reporting that at least 17 people got sick here after eating Cobb salad at an education conference banquet on Saturday. The conference was attended by hundreds of teachers, and most haven't yet been contacted, so the number of victims could go much higher. Nevertheless, the hotel is cooperating fully. Uh, because in our two and a half years of being open, we've never had a problem, only rave reviews about the food, and uh, we were concerned if there was a problem, we wanted to rectify it as soon as possible. Embassy Suites management had no problem with our request to see their kitchen, and we asked Health Department Inspector Paul Keita to take us through. To be honest, the kitchen at the Fort Lauderdale Embassy Suites Hotel was one of the cleanest I've ever seen. In fact, Keita says it would rate almost an A. The kitchen at the Embassy Suites today is in very, very good shape. I would rate it probably among the highest as far as plant cleanliness and uh, food storage. What's your best guess as to what happened? I feel that perhaps there was cross-contamination where a food worker prepared food, uh, maybe did not wash their hands, prepared food on a food surface, uh, did not clean this food surface before putting another product onto the food preparation table and cutting it. Therefore, uh, germs from one product can get to uh, lettuce, which is another product. So it's not just cleanliness of a kitchen that counts. Food preparation and handling may well have been the culprit at the Embassy Suites. And because victims report nausea, diarrhea, vomiting, stomach pains, and fever, salmonella is suspected as one possible cause. That has not been confirmed yet. Broward Health officials saying it could be weeks before the specific cause is found and before they know for sure how many people were affected. The problem of restaurant cleanliness, though, is a serious one. And beginning next Wednesday, in a series called Not on the Menu, we'll show you what's wrong with restaurant kitchens and how we can help solve the problem. Well, it has happened again, Steve. Channel 4 News learning exclusively today of what is the second major outbreak of food poisoning in as many days. This time, not in a restaurant, but on a popular dinner cruise ship. Uh, the symptoms were nausea, uh, vomiting, diarrhea. Severe? And, um, pretty severe. Jan Van Shaig is one of at least 35 Broward City Corp employees who fell ill after a chartered dinner cruise on the Florida Princess, which docks in Fort Lauderdale. Even afterwards, most people are complaining of having stomach aches for two, three days from strained stomach muscles, um, having very tender stomachs, some people even up till now. A team of Broward health inspectors boarded the Florida Princess today. We were allowed to board, too, after an explanation. We use outside caterers, and I don't want to get into a situation where it's going to be perceived that the Florida Princess has cooked and done something wrong or mishandled food. Although the ship doesn't cook its own food, its galley was inspected because food is handled and served on board. Management was cooperative, but the ship failed inspection anyway. Because of the roaches, you will get an unsatisfactory inspection. Okay. But inspectors still didn't know if the contamination came from the Florida Princess or from party caterers of Margate, which cooked the food. You see daylight coming in? got, again, the potential for rats to come in. An inspection right. of the catering kitchen uncovered nearly a dozen violations, from structural problems like peeling wall paneling to potential health hazards like old, grooved, and uncleanable cutting boards, where Inspector Paul Keto was able to scrape out remnants of old food. There could be a cross-contamination. But you don't know for sure? You don't know for sure. It's only a possibility. I guarantee you, my kids will go to work tomorrow and clean this place up. We're a family. We all work together here. We need this business to keep going, I'm going to tell you truthfully. We don't want anybody to get sick. Now, both the Florida Princess and Party Caterers say they have never had a problem like this before. Broward Health Department still investigating. Most of us love to dine out, but there is a shocking side to the restaurant business. There's details from Bob Mayer and his special newsbreaker report not on the menu. You are right. If you have never given much thought to what your favorite restaurant kitchen looks like, what's behind the kitchen door could be a nightmare. A shocking but little-known change in our health laws now allows dangerously filthy restaurants to continue serving meals. And for longtime South Florida residents who thought we had this problem licked years ago, it is not on the menu all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, I am announcing today... The year was 1973. Richard Nixon was president, and the national scandal was Watergate. But South Florida scandal was not on the menu. A nightly three-month-long series, Not on the Menu, brought home the sorry state of restaurant cleanliness in South Florida. 
From the little ones to the big ones, most restaurant kitchens here were dirty, some simply disgusting. We found uh, rodent uh, feces on top of the storage shelves. We found what appeared to be rodent hairs on the uh, dirty dishes that were left overnight. We also found uh, cockroaches, many cockroaches throughout the establishment. We found cockroaches within the vegetable uh, grinder itself. Is this the type of place that if you had the power you'd close down now? Definitely. There would be a lock on the door at this moment. But in 1973, the health department couldn't close dirty restaurants. It could take a violator to court, but the resulting small fines were little more than a slap on the wrist. After a week of following health department inspectors on their routine checks of area restaurants, we thought we'd seen the worst of it. We were wrong. So we continued, night after night, week after week, graphically showing why a closure law was so badly needed. Well, it's very obvious that this establishment hasn't been cleaned for many, many months. I would rate it filthy. The restaurant industry fought back. Faced with a 20% drop in business, its leadership lashed out at the health department and us. I don't want to play games. And I don't want them to play games with our industry. If we have something wrong, let's clean it up ourselves. Let's put the laws into effect. But you don't have to come in and put this all over the world. But it was that nightly exposure of restaurant conditions that prompted local government in Broward and Dade to act. Local health inspectors were finally given the power to close dirty restaurants, despite industry cries that violators simply be cited and taken to a hearing. Uh, to hold a hearing would, je would jeopardize the life of people. Now this is saying, well, you're not going to take that chance, and we're going to arm and equip our public health people with the right to close a place if there's an immediate threat. Dade County passed its closure law in 1973, Broward two years later. In its first year alone, Dade used the law to close 159 restaurants until they cleaned up. But guess what? Dirty restaurants are back. There's a lot of old dirt that hasn't been cleaned. It's not clean on a daily basis. And guess what? Local health inspectors are powerless again to close them under local law. Seems an amendment tacked to a bill in the closing moments of the 1988 legislature wiped out all local ordinances relating to restaurant inspections and closure, taking away a major tool from the people who look out for our safety. In my opinion, I thought it emasculated our food program. Tomorrow night, we'll take a look at how it all happened, and we'll take a tour of a well-known South Florida restaurant where what's not on the menu is enough to make you sick. Franchise restaurants are our focus tonight in Bob Mayer's shocking look at restaurant cleanliness. The Newsbreaker series not on the menu, but first you have some late-breaking news also relating to food, food poisoning. Yes, we do. Channel 4 News learning exclusively tonight that the number of victims from last week's restaurant food poisoning incidents in Broward has risen to 73. Those outbreaks stemming from meals served at the Embassy Suites Hotel and aboard the Florida Princess Dinner Cruise Ship are still being investigated. Tonight, as our Not on the Menu series continues, a look at what local inspectors are faced with now that they can no longer close filthy restaurants. He just doesn't know what sanitation is. He doesn't know what to look for. To viewers of Channel 4 News in 1973, the shocking sight of filthy restaurant kitchens became a nightly ritual until laws were passed to stop this kind of thing. Bonds has been chewed by rats or mice. But a few days with Broward Health Inspectors last month showed dramatically the problem is back. It's caked down for ages. Back in part because the 1988 legislature, in the closing moments of the session, wiped out local laws that allowed inspectors to close dirty restaurants. It was lobbied heavily and got through at the last minute. Willard Galbraith is director of the Broward Health Department. He says the legislative action emasculated the Broward inspection program. After this bill was passed, we could no longer go in and close this restaurant and shut them down from serving the public uh, until they were in a safe and sanitary condition. It looks like we have a rat dropping, and it does look like we have some gnawing. We went with Broward Health Inspector Paul Keita on four routine inspections. The only place that passed was the Arby's on 17th Avenue in Fort Lauderdale. It was clean. The Beefsteak Charlie's on East Sunrise Boulevard was not. In the kitchen, almost all the equipment is dirty. That bad? It's that bad, yes. At the Carlos and Pepe's on Southeast 17th Street, Keita found food cutting boards caked with old food, slime and mold on refrigerator doors, and grease buildups clogging and backing up outside storm sewers. And the International House of Pancakes on North Federal Highway was described as downright filthy. Yeah, the place is most definitely filthy. Would you like to close it? I would like to close it. Yes, I would. Can you? I don't have that authority, no. We have lost that power 
uh, the doors will remain open. What Keita found in the kitchen of the International House of Pancakes on North Federal Highway in Fort Lauderdale was enough to make you sick. The buildup of old food and grease on food preparation and cooking areas was so bad, Keita said they obviously hadn't been cleaned in months. Paint and plaster was peeling from the ceilings and walls with pieces ready to fall off onto food. Okay, you got roaches, little roach, baby roach just went in through there. You got baby roaches, and now you got a bunch more. And there were, dead and alive, little and big, including one that looked as Keita equipped as if rigor mortis had set in. The restaurant's meat slicer was filthy, its blade crusted with decaying meat. Refrigerators and freezers were literally falling apart, and inside the unit, shelving was caked with old food, slime, and rust. Two pieces of meat, one appearing brown with age, sat uncovered in all this. Like sewer. That was the smell in the IHOP's walk-in freezer, where things were so filthy, words aren't necessary. But in the restaurant's storage room, which looked relatively neat, the smell was of a very dead rat. Plumbing was leaking onto the kitchen floor. The dishwasher was broken. A box of tomatoes that the rats got to before the cook. And restrooms? Don't ask. Would you bother complaining about no soap or paper towels when the men's room sink looked like this? And again, we emphasize that the results of the inspections apply only to the specific restaurants visited and not to any other eateries with the same name. Tomorrow night, lawmakers say it's time to correct the mistake they made. And you may be able to help. Interesting story as to how we lost that law and to how we might mm. get it back. I was kind of hungry before you came well, on the set for dinner and completely taken that, that hunger away. It's real scary, Bob. Mm. Thanks, Bob.